Hello and welcome back to Redirected. This is a show where we sit down with celebrities, athletes, entrepreneurs, really anybody who has experienced a pivot or change in life at some point or another. We all go through them. And I wanted to sit down with people who have made it through these redirections well in order to glean their wisdom, but also hear some entertaining stories along with it. Today, we sit down with Erica Old. It was my pleasure to uh, spend some time with her. And Erica is an award-winning producer and founder of Black Bicycle Entertainment, which is an LA-based production company that produces and finances uh, prestige feature films. Her recent work includes Home Again, starring Reese Witherspoon, Susanna White's Woman Walks Ahead, starring Jessica Chastain, and Whitney Cummings' The Female Brain. Old is also the founder and president of the Erica Film Foundation, which builds the path for aspiring young filmmakers to become high-achieving film professionals that drive the industry's progress. Erica has left an amazing legacy with her career in the film industry, and now she's actually making a pivot as we speak to launching a cooking website. It's called Old and New, Old with an E, and she has some amazing recipes on there. Check out the bison chili for sure. And this is what she says about her mission with this website. It's a destination for both modern and traditional takes on comfort food recipes. All of your favorite foods made the way you want. So I really learned a lot with this conversation with Erica. I hope you will as well. And before we jump into it, if you want to learn more about Erica, you can find her information in in the show notes down below, including the link to old and new her cooking website and if you haven't subscribed to the show please do so and give it a rating on whatever platform you're listening to as well without further ado let's jump into it with erica old erica thank you so much for taking the time to uh join me today i'm really excited for our conversation you have accomplished so much and we're going to try to cover as much as we can but i do want to first start by asking uh do you ski or snowboard I'm a big cross country skier, actually. Wow. Okay. Dang. Never, never snowboarded. I I have skied, but um, wouldn't mind starting. <laughs> cross country skiing might be the most difficult form of exercise that I've ever done. Yeah, it's up there. It, it's yeah. up there. Definitely is deceptively difficult. I would say. Yes. Um, we always like to kind of set the scene and hear about the foundation of who you are and where you came from. So if you wouldn't mind kind of sharing some little breadcrumb tra- bread trails of how you got to where you are today, like where you're from, maybe what your parents did even, how'd you get interested in, in doing what you do? Sure. Um, well, I'm Canadian. Um, sort of grew up all, all over the place. Um, my father was in the financial services industry. Um, so he was a stockbroker and, uh, my mother, you know, to me was just my, my mom. Um, I went to school in, in London. Um, I went to college there and, um, after college, um, I didn't really have much of an idea (laughs) of what I wanted to do, which I think a lot of people feel that way. Um, and so I had just kind of gotten into film um, just through, honestly, some random suggestions from a couple of people hmm. and um, started working on like small things, some music videos, kind of a, I would say a typical story of someone that gets involved in any sort of film production or video production and um, really kind of gained an interest in um doing feature films um, and so started working on them from there Um, and I started my company around the same time and um, you know been doing that for seven years or so now wow your production company called is called black bicycle productions what's the affiliate yes what what is the um I'm a big cyclist myself, so I'm curious, is, is this stemmed from something? Yeah, yeah. well, when you go into our office, um, we always have had this wall of black and white photos of actors on mm. studio back lots, and they're always on bicycles. And, you know, that was, you know, in my opinion, you know, the golden age of Hollywood. And mm. it sort of was this really simplistic common action that you know sort of everybody had in common that was sort of in what i just what i thought was a very um sort of 
you know, beautiful, simplistic setting that brought everybody together and just was like a nice nostalgic reminder of Hollywood. Mm. And so it's something that, you know, was unique enough um, that someone already didn't have. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, it, it, there was a little bit of a, of a, a nice sort of homage to, to Hollywood. So. Wow. I'm, I'm curious what you studied while you're in London. I have a marketing degree. Wow. So okay. N- nothing film related. Um, but I also don't feel like you have to go to film school to be in the film business either. So. Yeah. And so was there a certain point as you were kind of dipping your toes into the industry, doing these music videos where you were like, Oh my gosh, I love this a bunch. I'm going to go all in. Dipping my toes in the industry of, of film production. Was there, was there at any point where you were just like, okay, I'm ready to go all in on this. I love it so much. It was after my first film. Yeah. Um, you have to go through one and <laughs> what I, you really do. Um, you spend a year to two years of your life, at least working on a project, you know, wow. uh, sometimes more than that, depending on the development process of the project. But um, what I loved about it was something that you see on paper in black and white Mm. that you're imagining in your mind is going to look a certain Mm. way and, and getting it from there to being on the screen. And that is one of the coolest moments you know, seeing for the first time on the monitor, something that you've only known in your mind, and then it becomes a reality to you and you're doing it. And that's probably the coolest feeling ever. Wow. Mm-hmm. Is, is there one portion of the filmmaking process for you that's like really either difficult or fulfilling? Like I imagine like, like, going through the casting process where it's like, okay, you, you're, you're talking about this vision that you have and how can you match like a real world person to this imaginary character? Or maybe it's like the, the actual scenery of it all. Um, I think creating the world Mm. is, is really the most challenging and yet the most fun aspect Mm. of it. You know, there's so many details that go into just creating a page in a book or just creating a page in a script, you know, far more than what it seems like from the outset. You know, Mm. you say to yourself, oh, this is easy. You know, we got this, like this is the backdrop and this is what everybody's doing. And then you say to yourself, oh, well, that is a hundred extras or that is, (laughs) you know, something that you're like, oh. (laughs) We oh, didn't man. really think about that. <laughs> Jeez. But it, it is really cool when you're able to pull all those things together and um, you can you can see it become a reality. So hmm. so you've worked on some amazing films like Home Again, uh, The Female Brain, and now you have kind of branched into a whole new world of a starting the Erica Film Foundation, Erica Film Foundation, and B uh, the old and new cooking website. Let's talk about the Erica Film Foundation first. I'd love to hear your uh, yeah. passion behind that. So, I mean, one of the things that I think everybody has a responsibility to do whenever they're in any industry is pave the way forward for other people to mm. be a part of the industry, and you know. Every one of us in entertainment, you know, especially we all have expiration dates on our ability, (laughs) which we are told very clearly from day one. Um, And so, you know, I think part of being an effective leader and, and part of leaving an effective legacy is to also make way for those who come after you in addition to respecting those who have come before you, you Mm. know, and I think that that chain of events is what gives an industry unity, you know, 
And I mean, if you look at a lot of different aspects of Hollywood and entertainment, we've gotten slapped around quite a bit recently for what we're mm. doing for diversity and what we're doing for, you know, women and what we're doing for each other. And that kind of seems to be a, a never ending theme, you know, and I sort of think, you know, there's a very, in my opinion, simple way to solve it, you know, and that's just to provide opportunities for other people. Mm. Um, so when I started um, my second film, um, I started working with the ghetto film school and teaching kids there, teaching, producing to kids there. And uh, we started funding a speaker series in the school where kids could listen to, you know, producers, actors, directors, people who were actively working in the industry, you know, at the time to, to give them a real insight as to what their day to day was, you know, mm. because the problem with, you know, film education is, is you learn everything about the art of filmmaking, craft of filmmaking, you know, those kids can turn a camera on, they can have papers upon papers of film appreciation and why certain film styles have, you know, prevailed versus not. Um, but you need industry savvy and experience to also, you know, mm. go about your day-to-day -day life in the business. And for me, you know, I've had a whole career so far and I can't tell you how to turn a camera on to save my life. <laughs> so, yeah. so, you know, I think it's, it depends on the, the job that you want to do that, you know, will sort of dictate the skill set that you need. And, and so we had that project grow. And so now we bring, you know, kids from New York and LA into our offices. Well, this year we've been doing it on Zoom because of COVID, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, we have different people talk to them and we walk them through the process of making a film from an industry perspective mm. um, in terms of the business aspect of it. And, you know, we say to them at the beginning, you know, we ask them what they want to be writers, directors, producers, you know, sort of a very similar pattern. And I say, well, you know, that's great. At the end of this year, you may still want to do that. You may have a different job that you've seen from someone that you've listened to this year that you want to do or prefer to do, you may not want to be in the business at all. <laughs> but yeah. you know, the the goal of it was to really prepare them for, you know, the reality of of how on a business level making a film actually worked. And mm. at the end of their year, we um, placed them in internships. Um, with a company. So they're, they're getting experience and they're getting something to put on their resume, which I, you know, the hope is, is that it really helps move them along and get them involved in the business. In yeah. addition to meeting people that work in the business, exchanging contact information, being able to reach out to those people and, and then being able to, to lean on each other too, you know, when several of them are in the business later on, and they'll mm. have known each other for, for a while. So have you read any of Jim Collins books like good to great in the, or built to last? I never read Jim Collins books. No. So it, it, you, you kind of touched on a concept earlier. It seems intuitively uh, he kind of describes the five levels of leadership and the top level level five is being able to create another excellent leader. And, you know, you, you talked about how you feel like it's everyone's responsibility, no matter what industry you're in to kind of keep that chain going and not, I mean, it is, it is kind of short sighted when you think about it to just pursue your own career achievements because yeah. when you're gone, they're gone. Right. So like the best, the best legacy you can leave in your work life is to like continue a, a legacy of great work. That, that lasts beyond you. So I think that, I think those are powerful words that you shared there. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. Yeah. Um, I know you've, you've done stuff. Uh, you've done a lot of work. You're a member of the, you're a voting member of BAFTA, which is the British, uh, film and, and TV Academy. And, um, 
also other organizations that help empower women. Um, do you want to speak about those at all? Um, well, you know, I, I really, when it comes to women's empowerment, I tell people a lot, you know, it really was never a goal that I set out <laughs> to do. Um, mm. you know, it was, I, and I actually had never really thought about it. Um, but I, and I don't know if that's because I'm a woman or if, you know, what it was, but, um, whenever I'm making a film and I, I make a lot of, you know, female driven films, especially, I always looked at who the best person was to tell the story. Mm. And that is obviously who is the best person that can relate to your protagonist, you know? Mm. And, and so a lot of those happen to be women, you know, and, and I, and I do think like that, you know, women obviously relate to women more so than, than men. And I, I don't think that that's a, a sexist thing or a bad thing. Um, mm. And I'm not saying that there aren't men and women that can't relate, you know, to the opposite sex better. Um, I've just found that, you know, when it comes to like dealing with women's struggles, um, which a lot of the films that I've worked on include that, um, it was whoever was the best uh, for the job and, and whoever, um, portrayed to to me and the other producers that they knew the the story best understood mm -hmm. the story best. wow if, that, if that's led to a, a female theme <laughs> you know that was actually not intentional i think that makes sense and i think i mean what what a great way to approach the the problem um you mentioned the industry having gone through it uh it's gotten knocked around a lot recently and the, you mean in in the sense that there's not enough uh, gender equality or like diversity, is that is that how it's been yeah. approached? Yeah. Well, we, I mean, if you look back at the history of entertainment, it, that's been an ongoing theme, mm -hmm. um, and I and I do think that you know there needs to be better representation of all communities when it comes to film and television, and there has been a lot of progress made recently. Um, but, you know, I, I think it's something that didn't need to go on for as long as it, mm. it has. Um, and, and so I think part of that too is including, you know, people in the industry that can tell all different kinds of stories that come from all different places and all different communities and things like that. Yeah. So that that's when it comes to the foundation and when it comes to the Iris in program, you know, that's one of the underlying currents of the program. Mm. Well, so kudos, to, kudos to you for truly making a difference, Erica. Mm -hmm. um, listen, I know that you have uh, experienced some recent life changes, uh, recently moving to a new state, which is, seems exciting. And then also, uh, you started a, a, a new cooking website called old and new. And I know this was born out of, uh, a desire to, you know, maintain the sanctity of mealtime in a lot of ways, but also make it, you know, a, approachable, but healthy at the same time. Um, spill, spill the beans on old and new. Um, yeah. Um, well, obviously, I mean, I've worked in film for a while and, you know, I have other things in life that I'm also passionate about. Um, I was actually talking to somebody about this the other day that, you know, I was never one of those people that just had like one particular thing in life that I was super passionate about. And that was my end all be all. <laughs> I, I wish that I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, those kids that you grow up with and they, just like love like photography from the time they're 12 and they're, like, they're, gay, and they're still doing it. <laughs> and you're like, uh, yeah, why, why couldn't I have that? Yeah. You know? Um, so I've always envied those people, but at the same time, I think it's also nice to have like several things that you're super into as well. And that's what makes 
great entrepreneurs and great business people. So, yeah. um, but uh, yeah, so I've, I've loved cooking and I've loved food for ever. Um, and, you know, when I was in high school, I used to, you know, cook a lot for people for like birthday parties and things like that, which, you know, was, was really fun, but I never sort of parlayed it into a career um, mm. or into anything. And, you know, something I always wanted to do was at one point I wanted to like do a cookbook. And of course now the, the landscape of how we take in content has, has really shifted. You know, we're not buying cookbooks anymore. I mean, I still yeah. do, but <laughs> we're, we're not uh, buying cookbooks anymore. So, you know, we're, we want to see everything and we want to take things in as fast as we can. And, you know, when it comes to, to cooking videos, I mean, if you look at so yummy or, you know, Buzzfeed tasty or things like that, you know, those videos are epic and they're, you know, super concise and you could just like troll those all day. You know? um, and I thought, well, you know, I love food. I particularly love comfort food, but I, I hated, you know, getting a recipe and, you know, cause sometimes you want to just make a traditional recipe that's full of sugar, full of fat, full of everything else. Um, but then sometimes you want to modify it. You don't want all the sugar. You don't want all the carbs or, you know, whatever. And I would have to go through and find, you know, different recipes that, you know, kind of did something similar and figure out how to do it. And it would never come out exactly right. And so I started experimenting with the recipes that I had and the recipes that my family had had, you know, growing up. And um, I just kind of messed around with them a lot and, you know, tried to find different versions of them. And so I thought, you know, there needs to be a home for all of these recipes that also have suggestions of how to alter them, which mm. I think a lot of websites um, in the food space are lacking in. And, and so, you know, you'll find some healthy recipes, some traditional recipes, but a lot of the traditional recipes also have dietary adjustments at the bottom. Wow. And, and those, those have been tested and, you know, the, they do come out pretty similar to the original, which is, which is nice. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it, it is comfort food centered and it's, um, there's a bit of a story through the the year that as we release recipes this year there's a theme you know sort of with seasonal food and things like that so so what what recipe have you made recently that you would recommend i was looking at the uh the almond caramel cookie bars mm -hmm. they look insane but do you have a favorite on on the site um i love making my chili recipe i really mm. do um some Fritos in there. It's, it's yes. <laughs> Fritos in, but um, the chili recipe I I think is is pretty dope myself. Yeah, so. and I've been making it a lot of years. I make the Frito modification on my chili all the time, so I'm a big fan of that for right? sure. Yeah. Cool. Um. Well, we will link that down below for for listeners to check out. Old and new, old spelled as Erica's last name is with a O L D E. Um, and you can check that out. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to actually cook those up, uh, this week, the cookie bar. So I'll keep you updated on how it goes, Erica, but I'm curious. So with your you, you, like fantastic breadth of experiences so far, what are your goals right now, Erica, that you have? My goal is just being totally honest to get this <laughs> site rolling and, you know, hope everybody loves them and, <laughs> Yeah. You know, see, see how we fare in the food space. <laughs> this is very, a very competitive industry and I am totally nervous about it, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, just kind of see it through for a year, you know, make sure it's sustaining, self-sustaining and, um, also continue to, you know, teach all the kids that we work with and, you know, ensure that, they're set up for success. So that's, mm. that's my year. The kids you're talking about with the, uh, the with Erica. Film. Yeah. Iris. Yeah. Okay. Great. So 
in the upcoming year, are you more focused on food or are you still dabbling in film? How can we expect to see you spend your time? I think I will always dabble in film. You know, yeah. um, there will be times when my attention, I think, is pulled more to the site and pulled more to the Irison students. But, um, you know, I think it's interest for me never truly ever dies. So, mm. you know, I, I would never say never to anything. Yeah. yeah. When you look back on the years that have gotten you to where you are now, are there three lessons that either have been shared with you or that you've experienced personally that, uh, the audience might find helpful? Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's, it's hard not to, um, yeah. you know, being in, being in entertainment and especially being a woman in entertainment, you know, there's obviously a certain, you know, sort of territory that, you know, comes with that. And we've, we've heard a lot about women and sort of some of their particular gender specific struggles in entertainment. And the one thing that I always stood by, and which is something I also tell my, my students is you never ever should feel the need to sacrifice um, any aspect of yourself or mm. your personal morals to be successful in the entertainment industry. Mm. Um, and I certainly have found that to be the case for me. So I know that it's possible. Um, it doesn't mean you're not propositioned for such things. It doesn't mean that you're, you know, you have an easy road by any means, but you certainly should never feel the need to sacrifice yourself mm. for, for your career in, in entertainment. Wow. So I would say that's number one. Um, the, the other thing that, you know, I was always told growing up is that everything in life is about perspective. Absolutely nothing is black and white. Mm. And that is something that I find myself saying every single day mm. in some capacity, because everything is totally dependent on the situation. And you really have to pay attention to what's going on, really think about things. Okay, why did this person say or do that? What's going on in their mind? not just looking at it from your perspective. Mm. And I think if you're able to open your mind up to that, you'll have a much greater understanding of the situation you're dealing with and you'll be able to think ahead wow. a lot too. Um, and uh, I think the third thing, and my father used to say this all the time, is he always wanted tomorrow's newspaper today. And, you know, obviously there's no way to get that, but what I took away from that statement is keeping on the pulse of things that are going on, looking at trends, looking at, you know, behavior and being a very good observer. And you'll mm -hmm. be able to find a lot of answers that will tell you maybe what's coming down the road. It might not be a hundred percent accurate, but you, you'll get a better idea. And I think that that's how a lot of success and innovation is born also. Wow. There's some golden nuggets right there, Erica. Uh, <laughs> I look at you and what you've done in your career. And, uh, I think it's apparent that you are a terrific leader, um, an amazing role model and, I think an important teacher. So your perspective is really, really strong and I think healthy. And I appreciate you taking the time coming on here and, and sharing that with us. So it's great to meet you. And if there's ever anything we could do uh, for you, Erica, uh, please let us know. But we will link Erica's information um, all about what she's done, who she is, and, and the cooking website down below. But Erica, it was a true pleasure. It was nice to meet you. Thanks for having me on here.